Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special world famous guest today is Trevor Loudon. Trevor is a political activist, a blogger, and the author of Enemies Within, Communists, Socialists, and Progressives in the United States. And he was featured and produced the 2016 documentary entitled Enemies Within. Trevor, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, look, it's a pleasure, Barry. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Let's jump right in. You've got some interesting theories that I bet our audience hasn't heard about, so let's go at it. Tell us, who are these Asians for Black Lives, and how does that connect? Well, Asians for Black Lives is the is the link between Black Lives Matter and the Chinese Communist Party. So what, 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 how it works is this. There's a group in California, in San Francisco, called um, Ch the Chinese Progressive Association. And it's a big community organizing group. It signs up voters, it, it, it campaigns. It's very much a political force in San Francisco. I think it's a dominant political force in San Francisco. And it is a front for the Chinese Communist Party. They have dominated San Francisco through this organization, which has been around since 1972, always run by pro-Chinese communists. Well, about um, just after Black Lives Matter was started up by Alicia Garza, police, Patrice Kaluas, and Opal Tometi, uh, the Chinese Progressive Association started up Asians for Black Lives as a liaison group, as a sister group to Black Lives Matter. And this group guides Black Lives Matter. It helps to fund Black Lives Matter. And um, it writes manuals for Black Lives Matter. And it is completely controlled by the Chinese Progressive Association. And some senior members of this have very close ties to the Chinese consulate in San Francisco. So, and they're traveling to China. They have ties to the Chinese Communist Party. And one of these one of these guys is Alex Tom, who is a, a the former C, CEO of Chinese Progressive Association, a founder of Asians for Black Lives, and a longtime best friend of Alicia Gaza, one of the main founders of Black Lives Black Lives Matter. Let, let's talk about that money you mentioned a minute ago. Do we know? how much money and other forms of support is coming from the Chinese communists and going to BLM proper? Well, I don't know if it's coming from the Chinese Communist Party. I know it's coming from the Chinese Progressive Association. For instance, they, they completely fund Alicia Garza's Black Futures Project, which is part of the Black Lives Matter um, you know, operation. You know, to be honest, Black Lives Matter gets all the money or whatever want from America you know, from Google and, and, and large corporations and churches and, and that kind of thing. What I'm saying here is that the communist Chinese are giving Black Lives Matter direction. You know, this is a black, this is, this is a, a, a Chinese army on American soil. They are burning cities to the benefit of communist China. <clears throat> because this whole year, 26, uh, 2020, was designed by the communist Chinese to destroy President Trump. You know, they deliberately spread the COVID, which wrecked the US economy and hurt Trump. Then they started the riots. Both, all of the riots almost were organized by two pro-Chinese communist groups, Liberation Road and the Freedom Road Socialist Organization. Let, let's, let's, back, Road, let's back up for a minute because I'm dying to hear your opinion on this. Trump has said since the beginning the Chinese virus, and he was attacked relentlessly for being a racist, even though historically for, gosh, a couple hundred years, diseases tend to get named out of where they originated or where they were identified, you know, Spanish flu and whatnot. Hong Kong flu. Yeah. Right, of course, of course. And everybody knows that fact, except for certain uh, members of the United States Congress and the liberal media in the US. Do you believe that the Chinese weaponized 
COVID? Look, 100%. You know, they, look, in March 2019, uh, May 2019, Trump put tariffs on Chinese goods. And according to Xinhua News Agency from China, the, Ch the communist Chinese response was to declare people's war on the United States. Now, people's war means, it's a Maoist term from Mao Zedong, it means every kind of warfare short of direct military confrontation. So the aim is to completely weaken the enemy with before your army even marches. So it's selling drugs like fentanyl to your kids. It's um, buying up politicians. It's stealing patents. And it's also biological warfare and starting riots on your enemy's territory. All of these things. They're deniable things. Look, we, we absolutely know the Chinese deliberately spread this. You know, they banned internal air travel in China when the uh, virus erupted, but they encouraged travel to the United States. They had a, they had a week-long celebration in Wuhan every year, the New Year celebration, and thousands of Chinese would come there for a week from all over the world to party up. And this year, the local authorities asked the Chinese Communist Party, should we cancel this, this year's event? The Chinese Communist Party said, absolutely not. So Chinese came from California, from Canada, from Australia, from France, partied up for a whole week and went back to where they came from and spread the disease worldwide. This was so, so deliberately what, timed to hurt Trump. No, I get it. So is that the, um, the, the most acute benefit in terms of what they got out of it, which is to destroy um, the re-election, which would have been on cruise control before COVID. Is that what the Chinese Communist Party got out of COVID plus a summer of riots? Well, they got that. Well, it set it up for the riots, yes. And there's other aspects too. But, but think about this. The Communist Party of China they seriously were wondering if they could handle four more years of this crazy guy in the White House. You know, he, he, was, ba he was harming them on trade. He was backing the uh, anti-communist candidates in Taiwan against the Chinese candidates. He supported the Hong Kong protesters. It was, it was not looking good for the Chinese Communist Party. They knew if they didn't take down Trump, he could do to them what Reagan did to the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. So they had to strike first. So the COVID was the first step, then the rioting. But think that it, it wasn't just to destroy Trump. <clears throat> you know, while Obama was in power, the American Navy was building eight ships a year while China was building 60. Obama gutted the military while China was building up. When Trump got in power, he started to rebuild the military. He knew he had to. But you can only do that on the back of a strong economy what happens when your economy is in the tank. And already 31 Democrats led by the pro-communist Barbara Lee from California have written a letter to the Armed Services Committee demanding massive defense budget cuts in the next budget go around because of COVID. And if they succeed in gutting the US military, guess who, who, guess who rules the world? China. China, exactly. So this is, is a, it, this is a military operation to destroy Trump and the U.S. military budget. We, we may very well, although we don't know yet, have a new administration, the Biden-Harris administration. Do they have communist affiliations in their background? Look, both of them do. You know, um, we're told that they're both moderate Democrats. But yet um, Joe Biden has worked his entire life for a group called the Council for a Livable World, set up by a known Soviet spy called Leo Szilard. He was a, a Hungarian communist who worked on the Manhattan Project. They elected Joe Biden um, with, the super, with this pack, and his job was to gut the US military to the advantage of the Soviet Union and China. And, um, at the, at the Council for Livable World's 50th anniversary, he gave a eulogy, he gave a speech, and I've got it in my movie, my 2016 movie, 
Oh, the council was with me right from the start. You got me elected. You guided me when I was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. You helped Obama and I negotiate the START treaty with Russia, the treaty that was so bad for America and so great for Putin that Trump had to unilaterally cancel it. Joe Biden was one of the most left-wing senators. He was opposing Reagan when Reagan was trying to stop communism in Latin America. It was him, John Kerry, and Ted Kennedy, the three worst of them. And Kamala Harris, I can give you her, she is of a Maoist communist background. Yeah, that's why out of all the United States senators, and I include the left-wing Looney, Looney Tunes fragments of Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, the independent rating agency puts Kamala Harris the farthest left out of all of them. Well, that's, well, no, that can't be right because the Washington Post tells us she's a moderate, pragmatic Democrat. How could that be? You know, but look, her, her parents were Marxists. They, they were supporters of Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. Her father was an openly Marxist professor at Stanford University. She was a student radical at Howard University. She comes back to San Francisco, starts her political career, has an affair with Willie Brown, the mayor of San Francisco. Gave, he gave her some jobs, got her started in politics, but nobody mentions that Willie Brown was a hardcore communist. He worked with the Communist Party USA all through the 60s, right into the 2000s, and now he's communist China's best friend in the Bay Area. Um, her husband, his law firm deals with communist China almost exclusively. Her, her political mentor, a man called Steve Phillips, a Maoist communist from Stanford University who married into a very big fortune, the, the uh, Sandler family fortune in San Francisco. He is the man who got her elected to the DA position, to the Attorney General position in California, to the US Senate position, and now he's engineering to get her into the White House. Her whole career depends on pro-Chinese communists. That's her whole political career. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today, and a special thanks to Trevor Loudon. Trevor, how can people find out about you? Go to trevorloudon.com. Just my, my daily blog. You can buy my books there. You can buy my materials, um, trevorloudon.com. Nice and simple, and I urge all of our followers to do it. This guy's got some important stuff to say. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to our text message alert system, all you have to do is text the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and text it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to our text message alert system. It's always free. You'll get all of our stuff like this show with Trevor on your cell phone, and it's simple easy and free. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.